Balloon Ring is a card that you want. Yeah, Balloon Ring is pretty good. It kills a guy or just gets rid of the Tempered Steel. You still take the hit, but... Relic Warder, Iona's Judgment, and Revoke Existence. Yeah, Revoke Existence is a reasonable card, but... Relic Warder is kind of okay, but it's... I mean, it can get dismembered and various things, various bad things can happen. So it looks like we are uh, moving to another match here between Aaron Lewis and Lucas Parson. So Lucas is they're going into game three. Lucas is going to be on the play. We'll have the deck list here for you in just a second and tell you what both these players are playing. Here come the deck lists. We have Tempered Steel. Oh, there we go. Speaking of Tempered Steel. And Twin. Ah, and Splinter Twin. So now, who do you feel has the match up here? I don't know. Uh, there's no spell skites in this deck, so probably there's one deck. Yeah, I mean, I think it's just a race. If Aaron can set up his combo on turn four, turn five, he'll probably win. If Tempered Steel has a quick Tempered Steel, they'll probably win, right? The, that deck's pretty good at comboing on turn five, so huh. turn five or six, so. I mean, look. At, let's look at their uh, sideboards here. So, Torpor Orb came oh, out. Oh, there is Torpor Orb. Torpor Orb is in the uh, Tempered Steel deck, which is a reasonable option. Also, Active Aggression. There are cards to interact. I guess I missed those. So, that's seven, seven pieces of interaction from the Tempered Steel deck. Out of the uh, Splinter Twin deck, there's Dismember, reasonable answer. Uh, Into the Royal, something you could consider. Inferno Titan, Combust, and Pyroclasm. Mm -hmm. um, how would you sideboard with the uh, Splinter Twin deck, considering that you have so many cards to bring in? Because it, like it seems like shields. you want Combust, Pyroclasm, uh, and Dismember at the very least. I don't know if you want Dismember. Shields. Really? It only kills, uh, what's it called? Uh, Spell Sky. You probably want Into the World for the Tempered Seals just to buy time. How does this, how does this member only kill Spell Sky? Or like, it only profitably kills Spell Sky, I guess. Like, just killing the random guys might not be enough, I feel like. Okay. Like, you're trying to combo, you don't really need to dilute your deck. Sure, maybe you just want to go for speed. Maybe even Into the Royal would be better just to buy time. Maybe or... if you board an Inferno Titan, do you want dismembers? Okay. Well, here's the matchup. We have Lucas Parson versus Aaron Louie. They yeah. have a two-minute extension. Yeah, two minute extension, and uh, we'll find out what uh, how this match is going to play out. It should be should be interesting. We've talked about the Tempered Steel deck a lot. I feel like the the twin deck is favored here, but it could go either way depending on what they draw. Especially a Torpor Orb and Active Aggression out of the sideboard. Now the interesting thing is Torpor Orb could easily be as much of a help as is a hindrance. He's boarding in four. If if you draw like two or three Torpor Orbs, you could just fall so far behind it doesn't matter. Especially if you board into Infernos and stuff. right. Yeah, and Frontend can some giant monsters beat you down while you have Torpor Orbs is not where you want to be. Yeah, exactly. Um, Refraction Trap is an interesting card out of the Tempered Steel sideboard. We were talking about this one earlier today. Um, against the red decks, Refraction Trap is pretty good at protection, protecting your creatures. It's good against Pyroclasm. It's good at Slagstorm, too. Slagstorm. So there's a couple cool things you can do with Refraction Trap. Now, I'm not sure if Lucas brought it in for this matchup, but it'll be something, something to watch in case he did. He already has enough reactive cards, I doubt he brought it in, but... Interesting to, to note, nonetheless. Yeah. Uh, in testing, I felt like Mono Red was one of the few matchups that could beat Tempered Steel. Basically, if they drew Tempered heads Steel... Heads up, at least, yeah. Yeah, heads up. I felt like if they drew Tempered Steel, you were in uh, you were in bad shape. Otherwise, you could win, so... Yeah. See what happens. All right, looks like the players are drawing their sevens, and we'll see what happens. Players want to keep. Mulligans. Lucas Mulligans. I believe Aaron's keeping. Oh, I agree. It looks like Aaron is keeping. So, Aaron, the player playing the uh, Splinter Twin deck, is keeping his hand, which is never a good sign, especially when the Mulligan deck, or when the Beatdown deck is going down to six cards yeah. up the Mulligan. So it probably means Pyroclasm, or Into the Royal Pyroclasm, or just the combo. Yeah, just the combo. Which is, if he just has straight up the combo, and Aaron doesn't have a good way to interact with it, or sorry, and... Lucas. And Lucas doesn't have a good way to interact Lucas with Lucas only them. has four Dispatch. He does not have the extra Dismembers a lot of people have. Four Dispatch. I mean, he does have three Active Aggression, four Torpor. But not no good cheap boys, at least. I mean, yeah, I don't, I don't know true. if you really want to be staring down expensive cards into this deck that... I guess uh, Aaron only has one Dispel, but he's got some Spell Pierces, a Negate, Mana Leaks. Whichever ones of those stay in are going to be a problem there. Dispel's a card we talked a lot about this weekend. How in the, in the Blue-Red Combo decks, both Ascension and Splinter Twin, 
Dispel is just a really great reactive card. We saw a version by Jonathan Medina earlier today that had a full four copies of Dispel in it. That card is awesome. He was cutting Mana Leak for it, and it looked really amazing. It yeah. just protected him from everything. I and mean, all the cards you're worried about are pretty much instants. Yeah. So, you know, they're trying to interact with their combo, and for one mana, you counter whatever you want to counter. Yep. And it just lowers the curve on your counter magic. Uh, so that, that's a card to watch, Dispel. Is in fact. I was pretty happy with that one when I saw it. All right. Now it looks like he's keeping. And here they go. All right. Lucas leads off. Lands. Spell, spell. Land, right. signal, pass, mem night. All right. Land, signal, pass, mem night. On the flip side, Aaron Louis is going to go for a ponder, the textless version. The cool one, at least. Huh. The cookie version. All right, puts back a bunch of lands, and chooses, almost draws, but chooses the shuffle. Interesting, it seemed like he was thinking about it there for a second. Thought it for sure he was gonna draw, but he changed his mind. Yeah. Realized maybe he needs one specific card and it just wasn't there, even though he had a couple things. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing about Ponder, you can't ship any of the bottom like with Preordain, so you have to like what you see. All or nothing. Huh. Unless you've got a fetch land. Well, then it's just whatever you want it to be. So Lucas serves in for two with Midnight single Signal Pest. Looks like that's an Inkmoth Nexus and a Torpor Orb. All right, so that orb shuts off the Seaver XR combo. Does, in fact. I think that was a Taxian Probe drawn by, by Aaron there. Uh, there's a Pyroclasm going to come down and make things difficult for Lucas, especially uh, off his Mulligan yeah. and the Torpor Orb. That'll work the board. Yeah, the Torpor Orb, I mean, while it is effective, it's almost like a Mulligan to five in some right. senses. Because you play it. It doesn't actually kill someone. Right, it just sits there. Probe reveals. Is that Planes Planes? Planes oh, Planes. Oh, boy. Things are about to get really rough for Lucas Parson. And Pyroclasm. Do not you know Nexus? Is it Nexus time? Oh, it's game three. If you are it's, in game the building, three. it's game three. Come to the front desk. Well, it, that was a Dave Shields. Dave Shields, please come to the main stage. Dave Shields made top eight. Um, I think I was. We were told he was on Tempered Steel. Uh, yes, Dave Shields playing blue-white Tempered Steel. Yes. Aaron preordains into looks like a Mana Leak and an Into the Royal with the cards. Back in the bathroom, real fast. What's it? Right, right. Sure. Yeah, that's fine. Aaron passes the turn back. Uh, Nexus jams in for one poison from Lucas's otherwise empty board besides lands. Aaron's turn again, playing a Misty Rainforest, just passing back. Uh, Lucas is in a rough spot, doesn't really have any real pressure, but he can easily draw out of it, and that Torpor Orb does have to be answered before Aaron can win the game. One more poison in for Lucas. Inkwalt Nexus is putting down some good beats. Mox Opal comes down and casts a Vault Scourge, uh, the black mana from the Mox Opal paying for the Phyrexian. Aaron taking one damage off his fetch line end step to get another island. Looks like Aaron has a spell pierce in his hand, plays a second mountain, passes back. Lucas beginning the slow beatdown route to victory. Leveling up Inkmoth and bashing in for a damage and, and it looks like the fourth poison of the game. Aaron Louie down to leave 15 and four poison. Uh, Glintalk Idol bounces Nexus, which gets replayed. It's 14 life and 4 poison, my bad. Aaron Louis' hand of Spell Pierce into the Royal and Mana Leak. Aaron 
Aaron Louis places six land and just passes back again. Lucas pays two mana, plays another Torpor with mana leak mana up. Aaron considering his options, given the need to remove the card to combo off, and plays a negate on it. Inkmoth Nexus mans up, and three damage and a poison go in, putting Aaron to 11 life and five poison. Aaron's still holding a grip of cards that don't really interact with attackers, except for maybe an Into the Royal that has to be saved for that uh, Torpor Orb. Ponder's trying to find some gas. Sees a Splinter Twin and shuffles the stack away. Draws another spell pierce. Not going to help him right here. <laughs> Lucas has a contested war zone, which yet again dodges all the counter magic sitting in Aaron's hand. Aaron had opted not to mana leak that uh, Glint Hawk in the hopes of projecting a combo later and just hasn't been able to assemble something. Uh, Nexus puts him to 7 poison, and 5 damage from the attack puts him to 6. Man. Aaron, uh, desperately digging for something, some kind of way out of the situation. Things were looking pretty, uh, groomed for Lucas earlier on, but Aaron has just not developed this game the way that he wanted to. Let's see. Especially with that, with that contested war zone. Only two in Lucas Parsons' deck, but it's doing a lot of work right here. And Aaron really doesn't have a good way to, to steal it or you know, interact with the war zone at all. Lucas, the thing about activating that ink moth nexus, decides not to. Yet. Lucas just opts to serve in for three, pump twice for five. So he's going to gain two off the uh, Vault Scourge, though it's not too relevant, and then pump up the uh, Glintock even further, dropping Aaron to 6 life. Aaron goes for into the Royal on Torpor Orb. Does he have the combo? Kicks it up. Well, he didn't play out. He draws Splinter Twin, but he does not have Deceiver Exarch, and that's game. Lucas uh, flips over his hands, revealing what I believe is the dispatch, showing that uh, he had an answer, even if Aaron would manage to assemble the combo. Uh, and so uh, another top six, what looks like a top 16 matchup in Lucas Parsons' favor, putting yet another Tempered Steel deck into the top 16. That's certainly a deck, deck to watch. You guys need to prepare for this deck coming going forward. I don't think a lot of people were really thinking about it. and It's certainly a problematic, uh, a problem deck for many decks to deal with. So you will want to keep your eye on Tempered Steel going forward. Aaron Louis uh, losing that match, dropping to probably top 32, maybe top 64. So, see uh, see how he finishes there. Ladies and gentlemen, this is just a reminder. So, the, uh, top eight has been, the top eight has been locked in. And uh, we're not far off from... Uh, I'll wait till announcement finishes. Thank you. So the top eight's been locked in, and we're not far off from playing out at the top eight. Here are your top eight competitors for this event. David Shields. We know David Shields is playing the blue-white Tempered Steel deck. Jason Hager. Not sure what Jason is playing. Uh, Matthew Farney, who we saw earlier in the day, and I believe uh, he's either playing blue-white or Tempered Steel, one of the two. Uh, Tim, Pikaus uh, Tim Piskowski, who I believe is playing... Uh, not sure Tim is playing. Kyle Dubinsky, we know, is playing Tempered Steel. Corey Fay, not sure. Caleb Durward is playing his 
Pure Steel Paladin deck, and he's worked on this deck a ton, put Nate Peace at the top 16 with it, and now he's in top 8 with this deck. It'll be fun to watch how that deck plays out, as well as uh, Ben Friedman. Uh, ben, I believe, is playing Blue White as well. Uh, Blue White Squadron Hawks, Hero Blade Holds, etc. So we'll have the matchup bracket, we'll have the bracket for you shortly, but it's really an interesting top 8 filled with quite a few uh, different things, different deck lists, different tweaks on the same deck list going around. We'll see uh, how that all plays out uh, very soon. So for the, those of you just joining us, I'm Gavin Verre here in the booth at Star City Games Open Series here in Cincinnati, Ohio. And uh, we just finished up round 10 of 10. It's been a long day of standard here, but 10 rounds are in the books. They are finished, and we are about to head into the top eight in just a matter of minutes, probably about half an hour or so until the top eight starts. Deck checks have to finish up, and players have to you know, have their top eight player meeting. But then we'll go into the top eight. It will cover some matches for you. These events are just absolutely fabulous. Uh, 10 rounds, great turnout. Uh, the banning of Stoneforge Mystic and uh, Jason Mind Sculptor certainly helped, coupled with the brand new set. And the turnout for this event was just phenomenal. It is absolutely uh, great to see so many people here. And if you want to come out to one of these events, I highly recommend it. We, you can play either Standard on Saturday. Uh, there's also Legacy Challenge on Saturday if you're just here for Legacy. On Sunday, there's the Legacy Open as well as two Draft Opens you can play in. And if, and if you do well enough, like, you'll qualify for the StarCityGames.com Invitational. There's two of these every year, and this awards, these events award over $50,000 in prize money. Absolutely insane. It's far more than a Grand Prix. It's almost like, you know, being a part of a slightly smaller Pro Tour. And the, the players are phenomenal. You get to play both Standard and Legacy. And if you can't make it out to one of these events to qualify, I recommend checking out an Invitational Qualifier near you. The way Invitational Qualifiers work is your local stores host them, and if you do well enough, uh, if you win at one of the normal Invitational Qualifiers or make the finals of the Super Invitational Qualifiers, you'll be qualified to play in the Invitational. And the Super Invitational Qualifiers are only given to a couple select stores. Those, uh, those qualifiers award $1,000 thousand, a thousand total between the top eight players. So you'll want to check into that and see if there's one near you because it's really great value. And the Invitational is some of the highest magic you can be playing right now. It's uh, absolutely fantastic. So it's uh, been a really exciting tournament and a lot of uh, exciting uh, decks to, we've watched. It's all about to, to boil down in the top eight. We'll be back in about 25 minutes as the top eight unravels. We get to see who plays who. We get to see...